Beef ribs. Everybody loves them. A lot of people say they're the best bite in barbecue, but some people say you don't need to trim them. Others say you do need to trim them. So we're gonna put that to the test today by trimming one rack, leaving the other one as is, and seeing which one turns out better. So Drew Wilkins with Swine and Bovine Barbecue. Let's get going. So the case for not trimming beef ribs is one, it's easier. You don't have to do anything. And two, there's a nice layer of fat over the top of these beef ribs. Now these are completely covered. Sometimes you'll see them with meat showing through, but I wanted to get two racks that were very similar. So these are completely covered in fat, which was the goal, but it's got a nice flat layer. So why not leave that on? Well, this is a good example of that right here. That is silver skin that is touching the meat. And on brisket, you don't have silver skin below your fat on the fat cap. On beef ribs, sometimes you do. So that can prevent seasoning from getting to the meat. That is the case for trimming beef ribs. To get all that off, have the meat exposed, there is enough fat and collagen in beef ribs. As you can see some of the marbling on the sides here to provide ample flavor that the fat is potentially not needed up top. We're gonna to put all that to the test today by just leaving one as is over here, and then we're gonna trim this one. So to trim beef ribs, we wanna be very careful not to take off any meat. So we're just gonna take a nice little knife cut here and go down trying to follow this fat cap and remove as little meat as possible. Just kind of lift up on your knife, have it angled like this when you're cutting through to avoid getting some meat. Now I did get some meat, but you know, that's not much in the grand scheme of themes. So we'll just continue to trim this up until all we have is meat showing. Beef ribs are nicely trimmed. We got a little fat down here still, but that is right on this bone. So we'd have bone exposed if I got that out. But the point has been made. We've got it nice and trimmed. You can see all the marbling in this meat. Looks fantastic. This is basically what it looked like before. They were almost identical copies of each other. This is what it looks like after. Start things off, we're gonna hit the back of the ribs with a little bit of seasoning. You really don't need to do this. I just kinda of like the way it looks. The, this membrane is gonna shrivel up big time. It's not gonna look good whatsoever. So this is not necessary, but part of me just makes me think that I need to season the backside of these ribs. So now we're gonna flip them over. And I do use a binder on beef ribs. So we're gonna go on with some Worcestershire sauce. Nice and rubbed in. Then season them up. And this is just a 50-50 mix of coarse black pepper and kosher salt. Now I use Morton's kosher salt for my beef. Diamond crystal has less salinity, smaller crystals. And the only complaint I have with that is sometimes when doing pieces of beef, it doesn't add the salinity that I like. So I'm diamond crystal for everything else, unless it's beef, then I'm going Morton's. Our pit is right around 250 degrees, which is exactly where we want it. So we're gonna get these beef ribs on. We're going a big bone side towards the fire. So you can see the bone side is a little smaller right there. So we're gonna put that towards the fire. We're gonna go on with our untrimmed beef rib. So now we're gonna let these cook till done. One thing I am gonna do in addition to adding the beef ribs in is just put in this blocker log right here. So this blocker log is gonna help the edges of these beef ribs from taking the brunt of the convection that comes with an offset pit. So the airflow comes from the firebox, which is over here, comes out this way out the smokestack. So what this blocker log will do is disrupt it a little bit. That way these edges, the front end of these beef ribs don't get pummeled. You don't have to do this. I just typically do it with all my longer cooks. So now we're shutting them down, letting them cook. We are about four and a half hours into this beef rib cook and they're looking fantastic. We have the non-trimmed beef ribs up front and the trimmed beef ribs in the back. Initial observations, obviously we've got some fat and silver skin slippage here, so we're gonna have a big area without bark on the non-trimmed ones. The non-trimmed ones also seem to be puffing up more than the actual trimmed ones, which a little surprising. Again, we're only four and a half hours into what is gonna be probably an eight or nine hour cook. So we'll see how it pans out. But for now, we're gonna hit them with a little bit of spritz, just some apple cider vinegar, shut it down, let them keep cooking. A little over seven hours in and our front rack, which is the rack that we did not trim of beef ribs are done. 
For reference, they're temping roughly 200 degrees, perfectly tender throughout. So we're gonna pull these. Our trimmed ribs are a little further off. We're a little tight, especially over here, which this side to the back of the pit can typically be a little cooler than the door because no matter how well the pit's made, there's gonna be a little bit of an air gap. So heat will come over this side. So we've got a little bit of cooking to go on these. Pull these, let them rest. If they come down to 140, we'll put them in the oven, let them rest at that temperature at around 140, 150 degrees while these finish up. Just under nine hours into the cook in our last rack, AKA the trimmed rack is done. It's looking fantastic, has a great bark. It's nice and tender. This area that was closest to the edge or the back of the pit took a little longer to get tender, but as you can see, it's nice, soft meat. So we're gonna pull this off and let it rest. Not too bad. Now we're gonna cut into the untrimmed beef rib. First glance, looking good. Very similar to the other one. This middle guy here. Nice and juicy as well. To see how these taste, we're gonna take them off the bone. So I'm just gonna come down right along the bone. So this is the untrimmed beef rib. Now we'll come over here to the trimmed and cut it off as well. The time has come to test out trimmed versus untrimmed beef ribs. I'm excited to give these a try. A couple of observations right off the get-go though. This is the trimmed beef rib and it stayed together really, really nicely. The bark is completely formed on to the beef rib. Super, super tender. I maybe made a little bit of a mistake in the cooking process on both of these. There were sections on each pair of beef ribs that were a little tough and I took them to tenderness and maybe took the rest of the beef rib to a little over tenderness. Same thing that can happen in brisket, that one spot that's dead center in the middle. Sometimes it's better to pull earlier. Usually the carryover takes care of it, but maybe made a little mistake. We might be a little too tender, cut them off, should have left them on the beef rib maybe, but hey, we're living and learning here. But as it relates to the untrimmed beef rib, as you can see, this bark comes right off. And that is due to that silver skin and just to highlight what I'm talking about, you can see this kind of sliminess right there. That's that silver skin. So I'd say that's definitely a point in the Y2 trim beef ribs part is that bark is fantastic, but it's literally holding on by a thread. That thread being the silver skin that was beneath it. But really it all comes down to how it tastes. So we've got some bites here. Got a bite of untrimmed, that's what we're gonna go for first. Cheers. I mean, come on, it's a beef rib. It's gonna be good. It's, it's incredible. Really, really good, well salted, well peppered. Has a great barbecue bite to it. It's a very rich, it's a beef rib, right? When we trimmed that, we saw all that marbling, fat, collagen within the beef rib is what makes them so decadent and good. And that's one of the reasons you gotta cook them for so long is to break all that down. But fantastic bite. I really have no issues with that bite of beef rib. So now let's come over here and compare it to the untrimmed beef rib. And again, just, you know, this is the slice we made, but it, the bark just comes right off. So let's see how it tastes though. Cheers. I have to say the untrimmed beef rib tastes better and it's because of that thin layer of fat that's up top. It's set uncovered in a smoker for, what was it, the untrimmed one went for seven and a half hours, something like that, and just caramelized, turns to deliciousness. That salt, pepper all melds into it. But while it tasted better, the texture was worse. It had a little bit of a slimy characteristic to it, which, in what I showed you earlier, that's not that surprising. And I'm not sure that the little bit better in taste that you get from the fat is better than the texture you get from the trimmed beef rib. All in all, both are fantastic. You can't go wrong with either. I would say if you're at the store, try and find a beef rib that isn't completely covered in fat, 
like the two I got here. I wanted mirror images of each other basically to cook. That way we could have somewhat of a control sample. Now granted the untrimmed took longer. Um, we tried to control as many variables as we could, but I would look for a beef rib that doesn't have a complete layer of fat on it. Trim silver skin where you see it. Maybe leave a little bit of that fat on there as well for a different texture and difference in taste because things cooked with fat on it just taste better. That layer of fat over it with that salt pepper just bleeding into it tastes fantastic. It's very, very hard to beat that. But from a textural perspective, and maybe if I just hadn't eaten a beef rib that was trimmed, I wouldn't have really noticed it. But you're definitely going to notice the bark coming off like this does here. It's is a little bit of a tough one because taste lies with untrimmed, texture and everything else lies with the trim. So you just gotta figure out what's more important to you. Me, as I mentioned earlier, I'm probably looking for the best of both worlds. I'm gonna look for a beef rib that comes from the purveyor without a huge layer of fat over it. That way you can kind of see underneath it, see where the silver skin is, peel that off, leave fat in some areas where it doesn't look like there's silver skin beneath it and go that way. So that's what I do, but in a perfect world, if I was serving to a bunch of people, I probably would go with the trimmed beef rib just because you're gonna be slicing it up, they're gonna be pulling it off, this bark could come off, they're left with nothing with bark on it potentially. I'm gonna not take my chances with that and go with the trimmed beef rib. That's gonna do it for this one. I hope you enjoyed this little experiment that we ran. If you did, please leave a thumbs up and like the video. If you wanna see more videos like this, please hit that subscribe button. And if you have any suggestions on what you wanna see me cook next, please leave it in the comments down below. But as always, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.